action. Go action. Live action. Going live. Going live. Going live. Crucible TV. On a Friday. Live. Crucible TV. Live. 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 Boom. There we go. Hey, here we go. Let's go. You know Let's we're go. back. We're back with Crucible TV. And yeah, we baby. are fire up today. Lauren. First one on, man. First she knew, one on. She knew you had that on the DVR. You knew she had an alarm set. Alarm Crucible set. Crucible TV starts 12:30 p.m. Everybody, Eastern Standard Time. Everybody should be having an alarm set for 12:30 on Friday. On Friday. It's, I mean, it's the place to be. So, thank you for joining us today. We are fired up that you are here. This is probably my favorite time of the week. My favorite time of the week because it's an opportunity that we get to interact with you guys, and I guarantee. Gorilla Mike's going to be on. If, if anybody's going to be on. Maldonado's on. I already know Gorilla Mike's going to get on. <laughs> Y'all, he's always on. So, I love it. Here we go, guys. Here we go. We rocking and rolling today, and it's Crucible TV time. And today, we're diving into something that I think is. I like this topic. It, it, I like this I love topic. this topic because it's so important because I think so many people have to experience this, yeah. but uh, – they don't know how to deal with it, or they don't know that they need to avoid it. Everybody always talks about wanting to operate at the highest levels. How can I operate at the highest levels uh, as, a, as a family, as a, an organization, as a business, as a team, right? I want my team to be able to compete at the highest level. That's, I mean, that's why we all work so hard. That's why we do all these things, right? We want to compete. We don't like to be average. I don't like to be average, right? But I like to dominate, not I, just compete. I like to dominate. Let's dominate. Let's dominate. But – we, we have come up with the five biggest things that we see teams, organizations, people, family. Like, th this is kind of like a big topic. Mm -hmm. we, these are the things that we see people falling into, the mistakes and the traps that we see people making. And it's killing organizations, killing the productivity of teams, killing the, the relationships within a family. And so we want to go ahead and say, hey, these are the things going on that we want you to avoid. So say yes, type in yes, I want to thrive. Or yeah, say yes, I want to win. Or whatever it or is. Or I'm fired up for Crucible or TV. Or just I'm fired up for Crucible TV. Hashtag Crucible TV. Hashtag Big Biceps. Like, I don't know. Whatever hashtag you want. Contagiasm. Hashtag Contagiasm. Hashtag Contagiasm. Shout hashtag out Todd the Durkin. Challenge. Hashtag Cherish the Challenge. Get your mind right. Let's go. So we're going to get in there. But before we do that, be sure that you're typing in there. Type, type in there where you're watching from, who all's watching. Mm -hmm. we, it, it's hard for us to see sometimes who all's watching. Uh, so we love knowing who's on and we like interacting. So if you have questions, be sure to pop them in. If you have any comments, be like, ooh, that's a good point. Or, man, I struggle with that. Be sure to pop them ooh, in. Ooh, I like that bucket hat. Ooh, I like that bucket hat, Ryan. Where can I get one? <laughs> where can I get a bucket hat? Boom. Where can I get a bucket hat that looks so good? Crucible. Crucible. I know where to get one. I know a guy. Message us if you want one. We only have like three left. And we got the baseball hats. And we got baseball hats too. So, without further ado, Mandy, yes, get your mind right. You know it. Let's go. Here we go. So, we're, we're hopping in. Number one, the number one mistake that we see teams, organizations, families, the, the, the number one trap that we see people falling into so that they are not operating at their highest level is poor communication poor communication yes i know all the husbands and wives watching right now are going yes been there <laughs> done that like been there done that and got we the know it got the t-shirt got the bucket hat got the bucket hat right but we we know that communication is so important but think about to th this day and age it gets so much harder to communicate because we're mm -hmm. we're on our phones like you're watching this right now you're engaging with us and it's we're we're getting better and better at communicating via like typing like Ooh, let me type it in or let me um, text like we don't even call each other anymore right so communication the, the way of communication is completely changing and we're seeing that amongst teams amongst businesses amongst families amongst coaches to athletes athletes to coaches athletes don't understand how to talk to a coach and and say hey this is where I'm at. This is what I'm needing. I'm not going to be in town. Uh, you know, just a, a pure lack thereof. That way everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Like, know? I think it's important to be on the same page. Absolutely. Like, uh, if if I'm working on something for Crucible and yep. you're working on something different and it's like, okay, let's let's find one thing and work on it together. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. let, let's, not, let's dominate that one area. Absolutely. And, like, not – take two different roads you know absolutely and i think it's the communication 
I, if he's not in crew, if he's not in here, let's just use us for an example. If he's not in here, it's good for me to know, like, where's he at? Is yeah. he out like sipping on a Seven Eleven free icy slushy yesterday, or is he like out there? Didn't get any free slushies, by the way. I wish I did. I, I actually forgot it was Seven Eleven. Never forget until 7-11. about six p.m. Never forget. But it's good for me to know what he's doing. What if he's doing anything good or bad? So number one, off the bat. Poor communication is mm-hmm. killing things, killing families, killing uh, just organizations. It, it's and killing. I, I think for coaches, yeah, going along with that poor communication, I think a lot of times as coaches, they assume mm. that players already know what to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, 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 you know, let's let's take baseball for example, since that that's a sport we love. You know, let's take like a let's take a simple play, and I, I just think a coach assumes. Hey, he already knows where he has to be. He knows where he has to be, and and they don't, mm-hmm. you know. And that and that's why yeah. that's why we have to be productive at practice and not just go out there and look busy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Parents, I'm talking to you. Coaches, I'm talking to you right now. This is going to be a new skill that you have to authentically and diligently teach your kids. Yeah, like it's it's not something that's just going to happen anymore. Mm-hmm. Like we have to fight, fight fight against technology like they are yes. so addicted here like this is going to be one of your things and it's something that we here at crucible implement into our programs like is forcing communication yeah it, how do you communicate like talk to me even little things like we'll have athletes we'll have they'll have a question about their program and they'll like walk up and go, talk to me and they just point <laughs> at it talk like they me. don't even use their words and I, I say i don't know what you're wanting like but what is it? What is it? it it's going to be something that you have to, have to, have to strategically mm-hmm. teach your kids how to communicate. That's how they're going to grow. And, and maybe that's as simple as, hey, we're as a family going to eat dinner around the table. Together. And together. No phones, no technology, no television. And we are going to communicate. We are going to practice communication. Not only is it good for the family, but we are practicing communication. Everybody knows where everybody's at. So... Absolutely. Just telling you that right now. Uh, Absolutely. Coaches, you're going to have to teach them how to talk to coaches, uh, other coaches, or scouts. Like, uh, kids just don't know how to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Kids, if you're watching this right now, you got to learn how to communicate. I'm telling you that right now. Like, everybody's number one fear is public speaking or doing something like this. Like, oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't what know. do I do with my hands? What do I do? Right? Just practice communication so there we go we kind of went off topic on that but no, so we didn't. on topic we're on topic. so on topic we're communication we're on topic there we go so that's number one thing that's killing organizations families teams like from operating at that highest level mm-hmm. number one trap is not communicating lack thereof number two number two thing that we see killing things gossip mm-hmm. i don't even like saying that word gossip like, how many times, raise your hand, I can't see you, but raise your hand, I see you virtually, if you've ever been, like, the butt end of gossip, right? It, it tears teams apart. It tears families apart. You, you, uh, I mean, our high school athletes, our middle school athletes know this. Like, they, they see it, they live it all the time, and it's, there's no such thing as a good gossip, right? Right. Like, it's something that should just be avoided at all costs, and if you're – parent if you're a coach you need to be aware of it because guess what you probably have gossip going on on your team right like and a lot of times with gossip it could be the smallest thing that you don't even you don't even think is a big deal right but what happens is every person that this little topic goes to Mm -hmm. gets escalated even more yeah so now all of a sudden that first thing that that first person said Mm -hmm. when it reaches the 20th person right it's blown out of proportion it is and and i think we do Middle school, high school, I think, are the biggest. It is. It's so hard. Those, those are the biggest times for these kids. And, that they experience that. And it's so hard. And it, that, so as a leader, if you're a leader, if you're a parent, like I said, if you're, if you're a leader, if you're a, uh, a coach, if you're a parent, make Gorilla sure. Gorilla Mike's in the house. Uh, of course he is. Of course he is. Uh, I love Gorilla Mike. Um, but make sure that you're killing the gossip. Kill the gossip before it kills you, right? Kill it. And that goes back to communicating to your team, hey, why, why it's so important. Not to gossip. Go, like, back, go back to what our grandmas used to say. What'd your grandma used to say? Tell me, if Joey. If you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it at all. Oh. <laughs> My grandma didn't say Go back say to that. that. My grandma didn't say it. Go that. back to what our grandma taught us. But it's true. It like, is. Don't say anything at all. that's simple, you know? I love that's it. that's simple. Boom. Was battling the internet connection, but I'm here. Cherish like, the challenge, baby. 
That's why I got the shirt on for you today, Gorilla Mike. I put this shirt on because I needed a shirt, and I wouldn't be. That's your only here. clean one today. It's my only clean one today. Cherish challenge. Here we go. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Number three thing that is killing organizations. And you're going to be like, Ryan, where the heck are you getting some of these things from? But I think it's something that kind of leads into number one and two. Number three, unresolved disagreement. Mm -hmm. Kills organizations, kills teams, kills families. Unresolved disagreement. Disagreement is okay. It's good. Yeah. Being able to disagree with somebody is a good thing. But then it goes back to kind of like number one, poor communication, right? And then gossip. If you leave disagreement unresolved, it's going to turn into gossip and turn into something that is just yeah. going to tear your family apart, tear an organization, tear a team apart. Use disagreement as a tool to grow, right? And I think one of the biggest things that you can do, if, if you do disagree with somebody, and it's a simple thing that you always hear is like try to put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. I want you to go at the disagreement with curiosity rather than criticism. See, if you're disagreeing, I want you to go into that with curiosity, not criticism. We oh. disagree about something. I need to be more curious mm -hmm. about why it is why? that Joey feels that way rather than just waiting for my turn to talk to criticize whatever, or just to bite my tongue and internally criticize. Sometimes, so, sometimes that other person that disagrees with you might have a better resolution to an issue, you know, or, or just, yeah. a better solution to, you know, a bigger problem. Yeah, absolutely, and just, a, just another way of looking at it. And I see this with families, I see this with teams, I see it, again, organizations, it, it, it utterly dest destructs. Think about the last time that you disagreed with your spouse or with one of your kids and like somebody goes off slams the door and that's never resolved it just kind of festers like you go to bed tomorrow like what if, but you never come back to it mm -hmm. like it, so often i hear about the i i got this kind of advice when i was getting married it was like never go to uh, never go to bed bed angry or whatever yeah. it is well you know what sometimes you need your space and you need that little bit of space before you say something dumb Right, and so if you need to go to bed and then come back and readdress it, I think that's where it's really kind of the the whole point of don't go to bed angry is come back and readdress it. Mm -hmm. Right, if there's a disagreement, come back and readdress it and say, okay, where are we at? Okay, where are we at? So that way we can come to a, a mutual agreement or figure out where we're going. But if you just have underlying disagreements it, again within a team within an organization, oh, I'm not playing the position I want to play. I'm not. Uh, my kid's not getting the play at the time that he was promised. Oh, I'm batting uh, eighth instead of first. Uh, yeah, like whatever it is, I disagree with this for whatever the reason. I disagree with, um, no, you don't get to get off on Friday. Like you, you, don't, you don't have the day off on Friday. I know you want it, but you don't have it. You disagree. Whatever it is, whatever the disagreement is, you can have it. It's good because it forces conversation. Mm -hmm. should force conversation. Always go back to the why, though. But, yeah, come back to understanding why. And that goes back into last week we were talking about rules and guardrails and things like that and understanding the why of the decision. So unresolved disagreement is killing teams, killing, killing organizations. Um, and it's a huge trap and pitfall that so many people fall into. And we want you to at least to recognize it so that way you can avoid it. That way you can avoid it. So got to have a strong bond. Strong bond. Strong bond. Strong bonds. Gorilla glue. Yep. Gorilla glue. Gorilla glue. If you're just popping on, let us know that you're here. Let, let us know, know where you're, you're from. from. Where you're from. Where you're, from. Where you're watching from. I know we had somebody from Michigan earlier. We got somebody from like Florida, somebody something from like that. California. Over California. Here. Ventura, Man, California. That's what I'm talking about. It's like early. It's like breakfast time over there mm -hmm. right now. I like that. I like that. So be sure to pop in where you're watching from. What good things uh, that you're getting from this? If you had any aha moments from this, that like, wow, I never really thought about yeah, that. Yeah. Let me is. know. Give him the Cali sign. Is that the Cali sign? That's probably like this. Yeah. It's probably like that. Cowabunga, right? right? Cowabunga, like bucket hat. Like, where can I get a bucket hat, Ryan? What do we right? do on the East Coast? I don't even know what's an East Coast. Like, this this would be like Cali, but what, what's uh, what's ours over here? Get bicep mind, curls. Right? Bicep, bicep curls. curls. Okay. Yep, bicep curls. All right, here we go. Number four. Number four. Number four thing that is killing teams, organizations, the, the, the traps. A lack of a shared vision. Mm. Lack of a shared vision. So often we see teams or organizations, and it's like everybody kind of doing their own thing. Well, we, get you, we got you with a bucket hat. 
Ooh, We're going to send him a bucket hat. All right. Let's oh, do it. Got to buy it. Yeah, you got to buy just, it first. Can't though. just send them. Like, come on, we only got three left. Okay. okay. Only three left. Wow. Yep. We had somebody come in and buy six bucket hats. Whoa. Right there. Six. That's crazy. Get your mind right. They want to be in the shade. But a lack of a shared vision, right? As an organization, as a team, you need to make sure that you guys, you are driving towards a common goal, a common mm -hmm. vision. Why? Why? Why are we here? What is the purpose of us being here? If you're on the marketing team, I'm on the financial team, we got somebody out, out there selling something, but we all don't know why we're doing what it is that we're doing, there's going to be dysfunction. And, right. and everybody's be doing kind of what they think uh, the, the purpose is. They're selling, the, they're going to try to sell the what's of the business and yeah. not the why's of the business. Absolutely. And so, so much of what we try to do here, we always talk about cherish the challenge. Essentially, what we're doing, we're trying to help you find joy in your challenge. Mm -hmm. No matter what your challenge is, we want you to realize that that challenge is happening for you, not to you. So, I'm being challenged, awesome. At the end of the day, that is what we are always trying to do, showing this authentic love for you guys and that, hey, let us help guide you to finding that joy in your challenge. Because mm -hmm. that's what, challenges are coming. We want- They coming, to, baby. They, they coming. They coming. They coming. So, we know every day when we walk in here, we're going to be the best part of somebody's day, and we're going to help you find joy in your challenge. Yes, sir. Right? So, let's do it. But Here's if you have, challenge, let's baby. say, that maybe that's what I want to do, but let's say Joey, he just wants to uh, make a ton of money. Like, that's his main focus. We're going to go very different ways mm -hmm. of how we go about doing things, and, and we can't do that. That's going to completely destroy what it is that we're doing, right? We're not going to be synced up. If you're a team, if you're a family, what does your family stand for? What What are the values that if you're out on your own and, you know, something goes on, what is it that the decision, what are your core values, what is your why, right, mm -hmm. of, of operating as a family? Like, what is that? If you if have I, different visions, it's not going to work. Because if you were selling the why of mm -hmm. the business and I was out selling the what just because I want to make more money, mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying to manipulate yeah. people to buy our product or buy our service rather than you, hey, this is our vision. Yeah. This is what we do and this is how and, this and is how we can help you. And yeah, and come be part of it. Right. Like come be part of it because we so love you guys and we we want you to thrive. We want you to be able to find that joy in your challenges so that way you can grow from them. We want you to run into those challenges. That's a very different way than just like, hey, like sign up for five days a week of training so I can make a lot so, of money. Exactly. Like they're completely different, perfect. And it's a completely different uh, authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So absolutely. if you have a team, you got to know why you're out there. Are we out here to win a Shame World Series? What's happening? Or are we out here uh, to practice? Are we out here to, uh, to teach the greater purpose of life? Like what is it that we're trying to do? And then making sure that all those decisions are made through that scope. Um, because you know what, if we're going to make very di different decisions, if he is purely focused on money and I'm focused on, I care about changing this person's heart, mm -hmm. there might be things that aren't financially smart for us, but if our bigger goal is like, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to serve that person. I'm going to serve that person. It's going to, maybe financially it's not going to work because we're spending money, but if the bigger purpose is being served, perfect. If all he cares about is the money side of it, we're not doing it. And so again, that's where the friction is going to happen. And he's going to be stressed out that I'm spending money. I'm going to be stressed out that we're not or whatever it is. So again, have your shared vision. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come from the top. So if you're the owner of a business, if you're a leader of the family, whatever it is, what is our, our vision? And even where are the, we going? Even the coach of these youth teams that, yeah. we, that we experience in here, you know, is at, at a, on a 10U team, like is, what's our vision? You know, yeah. is, our, is our vision going, going out to try to win every tournament? Or are we going to change all 15 of these players' lives, and are we going to develop physical skills, mental skills, yeah. psych psychological skills, emotional skills, all that kind of stuff? Like, what is it? What's but our it, purpose? Because I think a lot of coaches and organizations now at the youth level, even high school level, mm -hmm. they don't know what they're trying to do. And, yeah. they, and they get that mixture of, okay, we're going to practice really hard today yep. and develop skills, but then it changes the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're all about winning. Right. Again. You know what I mean? And like if if a team wants to win a bunch of turn, fine. You know what I mean? Fine. Winning's good. Right. Winning's, you need to learn how to win. Winning's great, but 
I need to what win. is it? Yeah. Like, what, what is, is winning? Yeah, what is winning? Is winning winning the tournament or is winning yeah. setting these kids up for success for the bigger picture? Amen to that. Amen to that. I love it. I love it. Can't yeah. keep popping in. I saw Louisiana in the house. And yeah, I love that. Big Mike. That has to be Big Mike. That's Big Mike. That's got to be Big Mike. That's Big Mike. So there we go. That's our four, and we got one more. So number one, Woo. top top five things, uh, mistakes to avoid or pitfalls to avoid. I know you were getting fired up, and I love it. I love it because we got the same vision. Okay. Number one, <laughs> poor communication kills. Two, gossip. Mm-hmm. Get it out of here. Kill the gossip before it kills you. Yeah. Unresolved disagreement. Mm-hmm. Number three, unresolved disagreement. Always come back. Disagreement's good, but make sure it's productive. Disagreement's good because it's going to force you to grow, but make sure you come back to it. Don't let it just sit and fester and then turn into gossip. Find and no the solution. Find that solution. Find that thing where we can be better because of it. Mm-hmm. Lack of a shared vision. We just went over that. Make sure we're all going towards that same thing. What is the vision? Why are we doing what we're doing as a family, as a, a business, whatever that thing is? As a coach. As a coach. Like, let, let's make sure that we're having all those things. And number five. Number five, number five. Number five thing that kills an organization, kills a family, kills a team, kills whatever, is a lack of an excellence standard, mm-hmm. right? We just kind of, let's say we're hiring somebody or we're bringing somebody onto our team or we have a son or daughter and we just say like, uh, good is good enough. Yep. Or, you know, wherever that standard is, we never set the expectation of where we need to operate as a family, as a business, as an organization, whatever it is. If if I bring him on and I just let him kind of do whatever he wants and he just puts us around and I don't get rid of him or coach him how to get better, that's on that's me. You. And that's yep. going to crush the organization because yep. then the person next to him who is busting his butt or is busting her butt is going to look over and be like, what is going on? And it's going to it's gonna cause friction. Now, there might be friction between he and I because I'm sitting here saying, look, this is our standard. I need you up here. Yeah. Let's go. Get your butt moving. Okay. Well, if, if, if you can't come to that standard, you're, you're not the right fit. It, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Get the right people on the bus in the right seats. Right? Because let's say we got, let's say we have nine people, ten people on our team, and nine of us are here, yep. and one person's here. Well, that's a new standard. That's the new standard. That's a new standard. You're only going to be one able to person. go. Yeah, you're only going to be able to go. Like, if you're leading, here we go, leaders, owners, uh-huh. whoever you are. Lead from the okay? what? Like, you can't, you can't lead from behind. Oh. You, can't, you, yeah. can't, you can't lead from behind. you got to lead from the front. Mm. Dave Ramsey said this, and I loved it. I love Dave. It, it cracked me up. Papa okay. Dave. No, this is Dave Ramsey. Uncle Dave. Uncle, Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave. He's Uncle Dave. He's Uncle Dave. Okay. Dave Ramsey said, you know, you can't lead from behind. It just means you are one. And I started laughing. But he said, you know, it's just like herding cattle at that point. Like, mm-hmm. if you're just going to lead from behind and, and not set, set the standard by getting out front and saying this is where we need to go, you're just hurting cattle and you're saying, like, come on, and you're only going to ever move as fast as that slowest person. So get Absolutely. out in front and start leading and set that standard and make it the standard. Don't say, hey, here's the standard, but I'm going to allow this. Yep. If you allow this, this is your new standard. Get out in front of the problem as the, the, the leader of a family, of the business, of a team. Here's our standard. This is what we do. But then... You go model it. You go model it, that standard. I can say all I want. Hey, Joey, I need you reading. I need you doing your goals every week. I need you doing this. But if I don't do it, it doesn't matter. Wherever. What, what's that old saying? What, what is the old saying? Tell me the old saying. Action speaks louder than words. Action speaks louder than Thank you. Thank you. Action. Like, like, what, what are you going to say? Yeah. What are you going to do? Right? So those are the, our, our top five things right there. Let us know. What do you think about those? What is your, like, Biggest aha out of all those. Which ones have you seen your team struggle with? Which ones have you personally struggled with? We'd love to know. Here's Um, one that I've witnessed here in the past couple weeks about kind of that excellent standard. Yep. A team team is struggling at the plate, Mm -hmm. and they're losing by six runs. Yeah. And now all of a sudden we get a couple guys walking onto the field on defense. Like, where's the standard? What's the standard? You know, you could have you could have five guys hustling their butts off, and there were yeah. there's five guys hustling their butts off, but other four are walking. Yeah. So now those other five, yeah, they come back down, and that comes down to coaching and yep. saying, "Hey, coach, what's what, the standard? What's the standard? Where are you going to be at? We uh, we're going to hustle our butt off when it's twelve nothing. Yeah. You know when I, mean? I when I was at uh, Chesapeake College uh, under Frank Szymanski, we would practice 
running onto the field yeah. to our position. We would do that too. We would practice. And is it any surprise that that team came in fifth place in the College World Series? Like, we had a standard of excellence. We held everybody to the next standard, right? Mm -hmm. It was just like, hey, this is where we're at. If, if we're down 10 or up 10, we're hustling our butts off because yep. that's who we are. We hustle. We out hustle, outwork everybody, even if it's just going onto the field. So we used to at Concord under, actually, before I get into this story, Coach Andrew Wright that I played for at Concord. He went on to play, he went on to coach at University of Charleston. Round of applause, start clapping. He just got he just got a sweet new job with the New York Yankees. So that's uh that's a pretty big step in, in Coach sweet. Wright's career. So congratulations, Coach Wright. I like that. If you ever watch if you're ever watching this video, um, proud of you, man. Like talk about a, a good story there. But but anyway, we before a college game, we would have a certain amount of time to be on the field for BP, for, for defensive yep. work. So we would practice, like, how much stuff can we do within yeah. that 45-minute window? Yeah. And we would do it, and we would fail some. Like, we'd go over time, but guess what we would do? What would you do? We'd redo it. Do it redo it. We'd redo it. Redo it. We'd try it again. Do it better. We'd try it again. Do it better. And, and we, we found that standard of, okay, every guy gets four rounds of six swings. Everybody gets ten minutes of ground balls mm -hmm. or, or whatever yeah. it is, but – we practiced it, and right. that standard that standard was set like that. from day one. So I like that. There we go. I dig the bucket hat. I do too. Thank you. Sebastian, Thank you. What's happening? Uh, do you even know where that came from, Christy? Huh? She actually made these. She oh. made those. She was she was the one helping do those. Oh yeah, she knows. So there we go. Those are our top five biggest things that we see killing teams, killing organizations. Um, again, this is something that we love to do. Again, like I said earlier, we love helping you find joy in your challenge, mm -hmm. right? Don't run away from the challenge. Be excited about those challenges. Run to those challenges. We love doing that. So if you are a, a team or you're an organization or you want us to come and talk and help build your team up, let us know. We would mm -hmm. love to come out and talk. Absolutely. If, if that's something that you feel like you're needing, come in and experience that, what, what that love, what that, what that feels like, because it is. It's something completely different than the rest of the world is even doing. So, Absolutely. Um, Think about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Think about that. Love, coming. love those curveballs that are love. Yeah, you. absolutely. You know? Love, love, love those curveballs. They're Sit coming. Back. They're they, coming. They coming. Well, so let's smash them. Absolutely. Let's smash them. So, all right. It's one o'clock. We don't want to keep you going any mm. longer. Thirty minutes. That's our cutoff. It's time. It's actually ten o'clock for uh, body bag on Instagram. Body bag. It's ten a.m. So. Ten a.m. California time. I like that. So, anyways, love each and every one of you. Make sure you're popping back on here next we week appreciate you. at uh, twelve thirty. And if you have any questions or topics that you want us to cover, it's like, man, guys, I would love to know what this is all about. Shoot us a DM, message us. We would love to cover any questions Absolutely. or topics that you're wanting to know about. We're just kind of coming up with things that we hear and think about, uh, but we would love to know what you want to hear about. So, uh, coaching, leadership, yeah. fitness, anything, personal development, is. baseball. We would love to get in and dive into some of that stuff. So, again, we love it. Love it. We love it. Fired up. We love 1230 on Fridays. 1230 on Fridays. We so, love, I love 1 o'clock, too. I love 1 o'clock because that means I go get to do my bicep curls now. Ooh. So, anyways, love you guys. Have an amazingly blessed weekend. Get your curls in. Get, get your curls get your in. Get your curls in. Get your bucket hats on. And uh, let's have an amazing weekend. Keep cherishing that challenge. Boom. Yeah, snap your band, awesome, guys. Awesome, guys. Love you guys. Have a great one. We appreciate you.